When you've become the poster boy for difficulty in video games, you know you're doing something right. From Software, with its iconic Souls formula, has become that poster boy, especially for the contemporary gaming scene. There's no shortage of areas throughout the games that they have produced over the last decade where players have gotten stuck to varying degrees, whether it's an entire area that's nothing short of a death trap or particular locations within those areas that prove to be particularly challenging. In this two-part video, we'll be listing some such areas. Note that we're covering everything From Software has made since 2009, which means Demon Souls, the Dark Souls trilogy, Bloodborne, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Thanks for being spoiled for choice, there's obviously plenty that we won't be mentioning, so do sound off with more suggestions in the comment section below. Also note that this list is not ranked. With all of that out of the way, let's get started with part one. Anor Londo, Dark Souls. Ornstein and Smo have become notorious among the Dark Souls fanbase by now, and while they're difficult as heck, they're far from the only thing a Norlando throws at you. You have to survive an onslaught of a ridiculous number of Silver Knights, but even before you get to it, navigating the treacherous and narrow paths of the city can be a very challenging experience, especially with enemies refusing to back away even while you make your way across these dangerously narrow paths. Boletarian Palace, Demon Souls Though it's one of the first areas you access in Demon's Souls, back in 2009 when we were all fresh-faced younglings with little experience with the Souls formula, this was our introduction to what it's really all about. Environmental hazards, hard-hitting enemies hiding around corners, winding levels, the Boletarian Palace had it all. Sure, in retrospect, it doesn't seem like much, but back in the day, this was the area that showed us how challenging this series can be. Farron Keep, Dark Souls 3 Farron Keep carries on the Dark Souls tradition of an area being obsessed with wading through poisonous swamps. Being slowly killed by poison while also being forced to contend with restricted movement speed is a nightmare of a combination, and there's plenty of that going around in Farron Keep. It isn't exactly difficult per se, but the aforementioned hurdles can be quite annoying. Tower Knight Archstone, Demon Souls. Tower Knight Archstone is where difficulty in Demon Souls really starts ramping up. There's much more ground to cover here than in previous areas in the game, while plenty of formidable boss encounters also await us, not to mention multiple enemies with more of a challenge to pose that attack you in large numbers, and environmental hazards that are much more difficult to avoid. Forbidden Woods, Bloodborne. Ah, Forbidden Woods, probably one of the best designed levels in any video game ever. The master of level design that From Software exhibits in this area is hard to surmount, and Forbidden Woods along with that level design also delivers a level of challenge that feels hard as nails but rarely unfair. Avoiding all those enemies, especially those snakes, avoiding getting hit by poison, managing to keep your bearings in the entire area, fighting the shadows of Yarnum, all of it comes together to make for a truly memorable experience like no other. Frigid Outskirts, Dark Souls 2 there's a lot going on in Frigid Outskirts that makes getting through it a bit of a pain. The large area is, for starters, being racked by a blizzard that significantly cuts down visibility, so getting lost and not being able to properly get the lay of the land is the most immediate problem. Then there are those reindeer with their deadly ramming attacks that seem to jump out at you out of nowhere. Getting through Frigid Outskirts ultimately becomes a matter of attrition more than anything else, but it can still be a testing experience, especially on your first time. Iron Keep, Dark Souls 2. If you don't have good fire defense, don't even bother venturing into this fiery nightmare. Navigating all of that lava can be tricky business, but what combines with that to make it all that much tougher is the enemies that charge at you in groups, with the design of the area naturally funneling them towards you. There are also some who might argue that the bonfire placement in this area can be a bit unfair. Fishing Hamlet, Bloodborne. One of those areas that makes many wonder why there's been such a sudden spike in difficulty, though it's not like Bloodborne or any other From games are lacking in those. This last area of the Old Hunters DLC is packed with deadly beasts and hazards. From giant sharks to homing skulls to, of course, the Orphan of Koss. There's plenty in this area that can give you nightmares for weeks. Tomb of the Giants, Dark Souls. Tomb of the Giants is significantly easier to navigate on repeat playthroughs, you know, when you know what you're getting into. For first-timers, this dark abyss is an absolute hellhole. 
with nearly zero visibility. Enemies that can jump out at you from the dark with little prior warning, archers shooting at you from the darkness, narrow paths that you need to navigate with little visibility, and so much more. Tomb of the Giants can be a trying experience. Ashina Depths Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Why is Ashina Depths one of the most challenging areas in Sekiro? I have three words for you. Snake Eyes Shirahagi Though mechanically the same as Shirifuji, this mini-boss encounter is one of the most difficult in the entire game. Dealing with the boss, multiple regular enemies, projectile attacks, all the while also being mindful of the toxic lake surrounding the island that you're on, can give even the most patient people major headaches. Blight Town, Dark Souls. Let's just keep the horrible frame rate aside for a moment. We've all spoken about that at length over the years, not to mention the fact that it got fixed in the remastered release. Blight Town still has a lot going on that can test your metal. From its toxic dart shooting enemies and narrow walkways that can throw you to your death in the upper level to the poisonous lake in the bottom level, Blight Town can be a deeply challenging experience, at times even to the point of being frustrating. The Gutter. Dark Souls 2 Dark Souls 2's very own Blight Town, not only in appearance, but also in terms of the challenge it presents. Navigating through its tight and narrow pathways is tricky, and you have to do it in very dark environments, while also being shot at with poison darts, and also possibly getting mobbed by hollows. The platforms you move on can also give way beneath your feet, so you can't take your time while moving around either. Smoldering Lake Dark Souls 3 Smoldering Lake is an area that many a Dark Souls fan still have nightmares about, thanks purely to the sheer amount of enemies it has, from a large number of fire-based enemies to laser-shooting worms and what have you. On top of that, you have to deal with environmental hazards such as poison and lava, while the claustrophobic corridors of this area make it harder to make a run for it when you're being chased by scores of foes, or even fight them, especially if you use large weapons. Arch Dragon Peak, Dark Souls 3. It's got enemies that can stunlock you. It's teeming with foes that deal massive damage. It's got the Nameless King, one of the hardest boss fights in the entire Dark Souls trilogy. The entire area itself is quite large, and the journey to get to the Nameless King can be an exhausting one. And sure, it's optional, but for those looking for one of the best areas the series has to offer, I wouldn't recommend skipping it. Erythil Dungeon, Dark Souls 3. As if it's creepy atmosphere, thanks to the eerie visual design, and the constant moans and wails in the background weren't enough, Erythil Dungeon actually makes life miserable for players with truly challenging hurdles. Doors are locked with separate keys. The corridors are cramped and tight, making every combat encounter a challenge. The jailers can drain your health, making combat even more of a nightmare, while the sewers the prison leads to are slightly less cramped, but no less challenging. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.